guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about overcoming a bad medical coding audit. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Oh, what do you do when you get a bad medical coding audit? Like, uh, and what I mean by this is when your, your data quality person or your supervisor pulls some records that you've done and they look over them and they notice that you started making a lot of mistakes, how do you come back from this? How do you regain your confidence if maybe you didn't know or you didn't understand or you weren't looking or something happened <laughs> and you were just coding things wrong? How do you come back from that? You know, it can shake a person's confidence uh, anytime we get audited. Even for us veteran medical coders, I've seen it happen where like somebody will get a really bad audit and they'll think, oh my gosh, do I even know what I'm doing? <laughs> what happened here? It's all about stopping and reassessing where you're at. Sometimes when you're getting audited and they're telling you that you made errors, they're not true errors because maybe the auditor needs to be educated. And that is where you come in with your appropriate resources and you show them how you got to that answer. So uh, just know that it is not personal. Audits happen every month or every quarter for some people. And because they do, it's you're going to find things. <laughs> the more uh, records that you code, obviously, the more you run a potential of making a mistake. Now, mistakes that are like human mistakes, right? Like something you just didn't see, or you're going through the records and you just didn't happen to catch that one thing in there. Uh, it does happen. However, careless errors, or errors that you're just sort of pushing it through, or perhaps the provider has already selected the codes and you're thinking that you it's okay to just go ahead and push those codes through. No, no, you have to make sure that what they documented matches up with the code selection, right? And if it doesn't, then you need to adjust the codes uh, according to the documentation, right? That's what you wanna make sure of. When you're doing that, then you're effectively looking over everything and making sure or giving a query when it is necessary. But when you start to uh, get kind of like complacent and well, the provider already selected it, I got to hurry up because maybe I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. Come on, guys. We know <laughs> there's been times when coders will find themselves talking too much or they will be on their phone, which being on your phone drives me crazy. When I see people do that, coworkers being on the phone, uh, the phone is no place in the workplace, right? Uh, because they are paying you to be there for eight hours or 10 hours, however long your shift is, and they are paying you to be there to work, not to be on uh, Facebook or Instagram or wherever you are uh, going on when you're on the phone, not to be text messaging either. You have to be able to concentrate on what you're doing. There's not to say that you don't need a break because <laughs> obviously you do, but phone usage and talking should be limited to your break times. A lot of times coders can get caught up in, in the chit chat through the day. So it really all depends on what you're doing and you want to make sure that at the end of the day, your devotion of attention is going to be to those records and for those providers because ultimately they are the ones that deserve your most closest attention okay and that's going to keep you from making mistakes and errors that you wouldn't otherwise have made right so if you're sitting there and you're concentrating it's a lot easier to be able to catch the little things now your auditor may not always be correct now you'll see that from time to time where a auditor will mark you wrong and then you'll be able to say okay it's actually this way and you can explain it by showing a valid resource not just that Oh, you're picking on me and you know, I know you have it out for me. So uh, I disagree with you, but not showing why, right? You can't do that. You have to be on your A game because these auditors have been around. Hopefully they've had lots of experience that they know how to do these properly. Not all auditors know how to audit properly. I will say that <laughs> I've had experience with quite a few, but uh, that's another story for another time. When you are getting audited, though, you have to take it seriously, but not let it shake you. These are learning experiences to be audited and to find errors and things that you did not know. This is a learning experience. It's not personal. 
you know, the auditors tend to take a lot of abuse as well. And, you know, they, they were telling people all day long that you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And there's going to be some people that will take this personally and say, oh, well, the auditor has it out for me. When in actuality, the auditor is trying to help you to get better and to be sharper. And sometimes the auditors, they can get lazy too, and they can just sort of push things through. And so that person has a sort of, um, uh, like a sense of security when actually they've been getting things wrong. So it really all depends on the caliber of the auditor as well. The, the caliber of the auditor has to be high. And it's not always the case because everybody's experience level is going to be different. And sometimes people get very hard headed, especially when it comes to getting those audits, whether it is the coder or whether it is the auditor themselves. There are going to be like some hard headedness in there and that can stop people from learning. But the important thing is when you get an error, don't take it personally. Just try to find if you were actually correct, get your information together and show it. You can't use uh, message boards. A lot of times people will say, well, I found it on this message board for this association or that association. That's not going to work. You want something that's going to be valid. You want something that is going to be like from the Merck manual or from a coding clinic. Uh, because that is really going to support what you have to say. Now, the coding clinics, it, they do come in handy because when you are able to find something, right, on your coding clinics that matches the situation that you're trying to argue, this is why you got that code, you know, that is most helpful because you can't argue with the coding clinic. <laughs> the coding clinic is from the experts, right? So um, a coding clinic, if you don't know, is, is about answering those tough questions, all right, from the people that are <laughs> in the thick of it. They are the ones that are with those codes. And so they, they're the ones who know and understand those codes. That's why um, they are, that's the word and that's the voice and the authority. So that's just something to know about coding clinics. That's why they are so wonderful. <laughs> and anyway, so moving right along. Uh, how do you bounce back from this? By digging deep on the education part, by uh, looking and asking the auditor, okay, how did you come up with this? Or how did they, how were they able to arrive to this? Because as an auditor, they should be doing that. It's not just, this is wrong because I say so. No, auditors are also educators, or they should be. And they should be educating the coding staff, okay, well, here's why I got this. According to this guideline, according to this coding clinic, this is how I got to this. So that way you can learn so you don't keep making the same mistake. And whatever you do, don't keep doing the same thing just because you don't want to be wrong or just because you don't want to be told by a certain person that you're wrong. There's going to be times when you're going to be wrong. I mean, we as coders, we have those moments where, yeah, you're wrong <laughs> or I didn't know that or something happened, right? So you have to make sure that you're putting yourself out of that whole, you know, I'm not going to listen to anybody else. You have to be able to listen, no matter your personal feelings towards your auditor, no matter your personal feelings towards the situation, you have to be able to put that aside in order to grow and learn. Now, there's been a few times, quite a few times when I've had to tell auditors, this is how I got to this answer, this scenario. And even with evidence, I've gotten, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, because the auditor didn't want to be wrong. So in those instances, you have to escalate it. You have to go to the next um, uh, option that you have. And when you are getting audited, they usually explain this <laughs> in the auditing process. Okay, if you don't agree with me and we can't come to a consensus, then we push it on to the next level, right? Which is the supervisor above your supervisor or above that auditor. So that is usually how those things work. It's different at every place. So be sure to ask. Uh, but when you do have something like that, then you, if you have all of your, if you've done your homework and you truly believe that you have the right answer because of whatever you're presenting that is from a legitimate resource, then hopefully the cards will fall where they should, okay? But when you are going back after and you are getting back into the coding again, you need to start just focusing on the coding. It doesn't matter what happened on your previous audit and don't think that you're going to get fired just because you have one bad audit. If you have one bad audit, it just means that you need to pay a little bit more attention or that you need to study a little bit more on whatever it is that got you. For some people, it's like injury coding. 
they're like, I don't understand how this injury coding works and, and how this and how that. And so they know that they, after an audit, a bad audit, <laughs> that they need to study a little bit more on injury coding. And that is something that can be focused because the better you get at a particular subject, especially one that is troubling you, the more confident that you will get in time. You know, uh, back in the day <laughs> when I had started uh, with my new supervisor and um, I was coming from a, a supervisor that was not kind at all. She was not very nice. And when she was auditing me, it was always an argument. We always, it always turned into that, right? It always turned into, um, well, no, this is right. Or, you know, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And, and that's the way she was. She was very much, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And so we had to call in <laughs> the chief quite a few times to, to break the argument because, you know, a lot of times she just kept her blinders on and didn't want to see past the evidence that I had for her. And so, uh, thankfully, like I said, I was able to get away from her. But, uh, when you run into situations like that, think about maintaining composure, which is what I had to do. That was very difficult. Even though we're sitting there going back and forth, it is very difficult <laughs> when you're having to maintain composure. But when the audit is complete and you have your, your final numbers and everything, like what your accuracy was and what your productivity was for that month, you have to be able to compartmentalize and say, okay, I did good or I did bad on this one. And just because you do good on one month of an audit, don't get cocky. You still have to be able to maintain that sharpness, okay? But whatever happened in that previous month, you need to let it go. Once you complete the audit and the audit process is over, let it go and move on to the next month. Because if you stay stuck in the hamster wheel in your head, right? And you think, you know, oh, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. It's going to snowball into the next month. And guess what? You're going to end up making the same mistakes again. So because you're trying to compartmentalize, you're going to be able to close the book on that previous audit and move on. It's about saying, okay, I had a stutter step and now I'm, I'm doing, I'm going to do really good this month. And if I'm stuck or if I need help, I'm going to talk and I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to try to figure this out because pride gets in the way a lot of times too from overcoming a bad audit. Sometimes coders will get it in their head. No, I know what I'm doing and I don't want to ask anybody for help because I don't want everybody to think I don't know what I'm doing. Guess what? I'm going to let you in on a secret. Everybody <laughs> feels like that. Everybody feels like they don't know what they're doing. And if they tell you, oh no, I don't feel that way, they're lying. Because of the simple fact that these rules change a lot and there's so much. And again, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. You think those things don't change? Think about that, you know? So don't be so prideful, but don't be where you're not doing your own research. You, you have to be able to do your research. And after you've done your research, if you still can't figure out whatever it is that you got wrong a lot on your audits, um, then you need to reach out to, to whoever it is that you're supposed to contact if you don't understand something at your workplace. Sometimes it is the uh, coding, educator, coding educators, they have some of those on staff. Sometimes it is your supervisor. Again, if you don't want to go to your supervisor, if you don't want to go to anybody in your facility, Reach out to somebody in your association, whoever you are credentialed through. A lot of times there are mentors out there that are willing to give their help uh, to, to veteran coders, to new coders, to any coder, right? Uh, it's somebody that needs help. There's a lot of people that are willing to volunteer their time to help. So if you are doing that, reach out to somebody. And if you need tutoring, there's a lot of tutors on LinkedIn. And I'm a tutor myself. My rates are in the description box below. And sometimes that's what you need when you are running into issues with audits. But just know that it is not personal. Uh, when you are getting these audits and the auditor is telling you that you're doing wrong, you have to say, okay, let me find out why. Let me figure this out. Because it is going to be about learning. And you can't always try to blame the auditor. Oh, it's the auditor. Sometimes, yes. In, in some instances, it can be... Per, very personal, uh, where, <laughs> you know, it is, it is a little bit of the auditor, but that's not always the case. And that's 
hopefully going to be in a very small percentage of cases. So you really have to make sure that you're putting your own feelings about that person aside that's telling you that you're doing wrong. Put that aside and think of, okay, they're trying to help me. <laughs> they're trying to help me with this. Don't give them something to go on if you think that it is personal. All right. So always think of that. Do your best, whatever you do. Just do your best and that's all you can do. And at the end of the day, when you're when you've closed your book on closed the book on the previous month and you're in that month and it's coming time for an audit again, don't get nervous and don't start to mess up because a lot of times it's just gonna be like your nerves again. And if you get like that, then you're gonna self-sabotage yourself. <laughs> uh, if that is a word, self-sabotage yourself. <laughs> uh, you're gonna self-sabotage because of the simple fact that you're gonna have it in your head that you're gonna get it wrong. Don't think like that. Start to make sure that you pay attention to those details. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you guys a story. So I happened to uh, be coding right? It was this one record that I did get uh, an error on. So this was way in the beginning uh, when I when I very first started with ortho. And uh, I was seeing that they were doing a lot of injections. What I what I didn't see was that um, they, a lot of times they were saying that they were injecting into the subacromial, right, which is the major joint, right? Um, so it's a large joint in the shoulder, right? But there's also the AC, the acromoclavicular, if I said it right, <laughs> the AC joint. AC joint is considered a medium-sized joint. So the code changes. So if you are doing a subacromial injection, it's 20610, right? For that uh, joint uh, aspiration or arthrocentesis into a major joint. When, it, when you're going into the AC joint, that's a medium joint, right? And so I had selected 20610. Well, that that record got caught on an audit. And uh, the auditor was like, uh, it's actually in the AC joint. So that's a medium sized joint. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. So it is a part of knowing your anatomy as well. And I learned <laughs> that day how important it was to review the whole body section, whatever body section that you're coding for. And so for me, knowing musculoskeletal system was imperative and crucial to learn. So I learned like that. And my boss has said, even my boss now, she has said, Blue, I like that I tell you if you do something, there's an error or whatever that we agree on <laughs> and you never do it again. That's the goal of being in the audit process is that you don't keep continuing to make the same mistakes. So that is something to think about. But again, knowing that those, knowing the details of anatomy was going to be very particular for me because selecting these codes and these uh, proper procedures according to the body part uh, was going to be really critical. So that is why I make it my mission now. <laughs> Anytime I started a new clinic uh, that I learn everything that I can about that disease process, about that body part or whatever it is, you know, when you're talking about the musculoskeletal system is a lot. And again, you know, just knowing those little detail things and she, the fact that she happened to catch that, that was like, wow, because of the simple fact that I didn't see it. You know, I, I saw an in, injection into the shoulder. That's all I saw. And I didn't see the fact that it was into the AC joint. So, <laughs> Oh, the stories I could tell you guys about audits, but the things that you learn, you, you learn a lot. And again, when you are having to overcome this, it is a mental game too. You have to be able to tell yourself, I can do this. I am a good coder. I am a detailed coder, uh, but you have to set yourself up for success and getting educated is a huge part of it. Studying whatever you have to, so that you don't continue to make the same mistakes again and again. Uh, but having that valid proof in order to uh, back up any arguments that you have. You know, that is the whole the goal, you know, <laughs> of it all. So anyway, uh, but yes, that's my message for today. Stop. Realize that it's not personal. Move on from a bad audit, uh, whatever you do, and learn from the experience. That is the takeaway. You have to learn because... If you, if you always think that it's personal or if you never take advantage of, of an audit, 
to be able to see, am I really gathering the whole scope of what is actually happening? If you never fully in, engage in that process, you're losing out. You're going to lose out. So accept it. And yes, you're going to be told that you're wrong, but you have to be able to defend yourself. If you know uh, that you've used a guideline or something to get to that uh, particular answer, you know, and you can't back down either. That's one <laughs> closing out word that I will say is uh, a lot of times people don't want to, or they think that they can't argue back with the auditor because they'll say, oh, well, the auditor said it was wrong. Auditor is not always correct either. Okay, so make sure that you understand how and why they got to what they got to if it is different from your answer. You never know, you may just be saving yourself, okay? Uh, but always be professional at all times, whatever you do, <laughs> because as, as things get passionate in this field, uh, you, you still have to be able to maintain decorum, and that is very key, especially when you're trying to get your point across. And that's all I'm going to say. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I hope that you'll join me tomorrow. Please hit the like button, subscribe. And if you haven't already, share this if it helped you. And I will see y'all on the next episode. Bye.